Hey guys, good evening. Uh, welcome to yet another session of uh, Snehearts, the Art Talk. And today we have eminent artist Shampaji, and uh, she is here to talk about her journey. And uh, as all of you know, uh, Sneha Arts is an initiative by Dr. Sneha Lata Prasad. She is a sculptor. She is, uh, you know, she's grabbed many awards and recognition. And she also has an art studio, uh, Sneha Art Studio. Uh, which does a lot of activities, events for uh, best artists uh, around the world. And uh, yep, this is one initiative which uh, has picked up well, and this is season two. Uh, thanks a lot, Shampaji, for joining us on this show. Uh, you, you've been busy. Um, so we are glad that uh, we got you here. Uh, one of the best things is uh, you, along with your entire family, uh, uh, make me feel jealous because you 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 know you travel a lot and apart from that uh, you you enjoy your work so your work is part of uh, I mean not your travel is part of your work so this this really makes me feel jealous but uh, you know uh, before we get on to uh, the journey of traveling uh, we would love to hear uh, about you how did art start and uh, how much influence did your family have uh, in this art journey of yours. Sure. Uh, thank you, Ravi. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, uh, I must thank Snay Arts uh, for you know having me here, and uh, and thanks to you also. Uh, I'm very happy that someone is jealous, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's not like that. Uh, traveling has always been a passion, and uh, it has you know a lot of challenges also. But in in general, we enjoy traveling. Uh, having said that. Um, uh, my thanks to Snay and uh, to the Snay art team. Uh, art, uh, you know, um, in my uh, like, if I see my journey, art. There is no artist in my in my household per se. Uh, they are all from the either from the medical or the engineering or the MBA, the general backgrounds. So I was actually one of the first maybe artists. Uh, who was trained? Who was trained in uh, in, in my in my house uh, when we were young and all? But art has always been a part of our life uh, because I come from a Bengali family, and as you know, Bengali families we are so much into you know different activities all through the year uh, because of our festivals and all. We have the Durga Puja, we have the Lakshmi Puja, which happens in our house. So art has always been around, and also uh, you know my. Um, uh, earlier memories uh, of my aunt or my grandmother or even my mother for that matter she they used to you know have such beautiful stories folklore uh, we have a book most bengalis are aware of which is called thakumar juli so you have small you know uh, small um, uh, stories which are there and those, those are so rich in the visual, uh, you know, in, in an image, if you can imagine what is happening, they're so rich in that, that a small child gets influenced. And I also got influenced into that. Also, my aunt and all, um, my grandmother, uh, they used to make these beautiful alpanas and all, if you know, alpana, mm -hmm. which is made with rice, uh, rice and water, paste. And on the floor, when you have a very auspicious occasion in your house, you uh, sort of make those designs. So, you know, art has always been there. And uh, even when I was a child, uh, Durga Puja was only not starting from the Maha Shashti day. It used to start much before because we used to go and see these, uh, you know, these um, uh, artisans who used to come from Kolkata. And they used to make these beautiful images of Ma Durga right from, you know, binding the straw, putting in the... Um, uh, the, the clay and then going to the finish so right from day one we used to be very actively as children very actively involved in that so that journey has always been uh, there with me so uh, that's how art was a very essential part of me when I grew up but my father is an engineer my mother is a housewife ma was very good at drawing you know and she was really but she was the one who used to make all my charts and other things in school. So, <laughs> so essentially, it so happened that one day she told me, "Enough is enough. I'm not drawing your chart papers. She used to make them very well, and I'm not drawing it. And you are going to do it yourself." So that's how my interest in art started. 
that I had to do my work on my own. So that's how I learned drawing and other other things because the teachers knew that I make very good uh, charts and other things, which my mother used to make, not me. So when it came down to me to make, then I had to live up to that level, you know, that I had to produce something which was good. Which teachers so appreciate again. Yeah, so that's Chori, how it's... Chori nahi <laughs> ah. That's what they say, right? You, you have to be so good that, you you know, people don't catch that, uh, yes. you know, it wasn't you. So, yeah, so, but I was always my father, uh, although he was an engineer and he had nothing, no inclination of drawing, you know, he used to make these stick figures. But uh, he was very much well-read and uh, very well aware. And uh, Baba was the one, you know, it used to... They, in, when we used to have the Durga Puja and all, we used to have competitions, which were very nice because you had all the children participating, whether it's drama, art, you know, recitation, debate, anything. And we used to all be involved in that. So that's, you know, when I started winning prizes in the Puja uh, Pandals, where I used to start, you know, that's how I realized that, you know, I art is a very much, uh, it's an important part of my growing up. So uh, that's how things started uh, in, in my childhood, actually. And my aunt, uh, she is she was the one, uh, my bua, you know, my father's uh, sister. She was the only one I had seen painting canvases. You know, she used to do it as a hobby. And uh, so she was the only, you can say, an artist in our family. So uh, that's how things started. Any any events, any museums you visited, any specific art, you know, from your books while you were studying, which inspired you, saying that banana hai to aise banana hai during uh, your childhood uh, before your art journey started. Yeah, look, uh, 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 you know, in, in a Bengali household, you have Jami D. Roy always present. You know, it's always there. You have Rabindranath Tagore and his art and music and uh, poems and everything there. So that artistic inclination was always there and that, you know, we were always surrounded by such things, uh, dramatics over here. And also, uh, but uh, I won't say that when I was a child, uh, I never used to, uh, you know, like I never knew that, you know, many artists and all. Only thing, Jamni Roy and the Alpana and, and uh, uh, other things which we used to just, uh, just see and all. That all in the pandals and all. So that was essentially all we knew about art. Uh, and as a school in a hobby and all. But I was very uh, I was very good at uh, my practical files used to be very good. Especially my botany practical file. Uh, my biology practical file. So um, uh, I, now when I think of it, I think so I was more drawn towards it because of the art. My file used to be very good. So, <laughs> so I think so because of the art, I was more drawn towards that. Uh, so that's what. And any of, uh, I mean, yeah, before the art journey, I mean, during the childhood, we generally copy a specific art, you know, which is already existing. Now, now you have your own style of, yes, yes. you know, art. But before that, we used to copy matlab, some image, yes. you know, we try to replicate uh, what is you know, very ex right. is existing and, you know, you like it very much. So as a kuch art, yaad hai aapko. Uh, you you know, I, was very I was very fortunate. Uh, uh, my schooling, I was in Delhi and before that I was in Bombay in Jamnavai Nursery School. Over there also there was a lot of emphasis on co-curricular activities and art was my favorite in that. Uh, when I came to Delhi, I joined the Sri Aurobindo Ashram School that is Mothers International and we had a very good art teacher, Mr. U Bose. He's still there and uh, thanks to him, he never encouraged copying. You know, he was so good that he always, whatever he used to draw, he never used to negate it or say, you know, what have you made? It, he always used to say, huh, this is good, but it can be better, you know. Why don't, how can we make it better? So that thing of copying was never encouraged in school. So thanks to my uh, art, sir, I, I had art till I think so in or 10th standard, you had art. After that, I became a science student. So, um, he was one person who used to take us to the competitions, different, and that time we had the Shankars and all, and I won prizes in all of them. I won international competition, Shankars on the spot, other competition. There used to be a Nehru competition, Nehru uh, planetarium, where we, you know, we all, a group, our group won the first prize, murals and all. So it's because of Sir that he never encouraged. 
it was always something that you can make on your own what can you do on your own no copy and in that how you can you know uh, improve and progress that is what always he taught us so i think so that helps out there that um, we always were told to think on our own what best we can do on our own that was more preferred you you were a botany uh, you know student and you know i'm sure uh, just with the uh, notes or the drawings you would have scored extra marks than others so what what transformed you from you know complete science to art when did you start this as a you know complete profession and you know you decided that yes this is my way yeah. uh, no you know it what happens uh, at that time when you are uh, in 10th standard and i was fairly a good student not a you know okay average student uh, and i got a good marks in my 10th and uh, at that time when i was in 10th uh, going to a science section because all our friends are going there so you you generally prefer you know nobody wanted to go to an art section so uh, i remember my father telling me that uh, why don't you take up arts and i was like uh, why arts i have done good in 10th why do i need to go to arts so uh, that's how the science and i enjoyed uh, except for chemistry i was very bad at it physics and uh, and maths also i was very bad but physics and uh, botany was uh, biology was very good so that's how i started and uh, that time art as a career uh, i had never thought of actually uh, because uh, for per se there was no one an artist in our house had there been an artist in our house maybe i could have thought of so it was very natural that you know i i sat down for my medical also i didn't get through i think so i got to a dental college or something which my father didn't prefer and uh, then i did my botany honors i was doing my botany honors and that's when uh, uh, we have a, a very eminent artist and professor who was a professor in our college uh, uh, dhiraj chaudhary sir he is unfortunately no more but sir was one person he was a friend of my father and he came and said that why don't you put her into an art college because her drawing is so good she's been winning prizes because school i was a, a science student but my uh, drawing teacher used to take me for all the competitions you know so uh, and you won't believe it uh, i just asked him i said where is this art college i was not even aware of it <laughs> <laughs> so he got very angry he's he's a very eminent uh, person uh, artist and uh, and that's how i uh, went and i gave my exam for the entrance exam i was in second year botany and i gave my entrance and i qualified and then i think so that was the best decision of my life and my father helped me he was all for it and not once did he tell me that why you want to shift so that was great that always my parents have always encouraged me uh, in whatever i do and still now there there is always an encouragement super so that helps i think so so how, how was the college life oh art? yeah uh, art college was a revelation uh, because uh, you know i was always very disciplined and very uh, studious and i always had a way of doing things and all school also and then when you go to art college you are actually in an environment which is absolutely free you know there is no binding there is no, nothing like uh, uh, of course we have the you have to attend classes and all but it was such fun i never knew you know you're studying you're doing your practical work and there is so much of fun you can have that is i think if you enjoy what you're doing then you know you slow whatever you're doing that becomes a fun factor you will want to be in that uh, zone so art college and I, we were very fortunate that time that delhi college of art we had very good teachers with us i mean uh, I, i would say uh, i had i was uh, my etching ma'am anupam sood ma'am she is a very eminent person uh, she never used to teach anything not that you know she used to tell you do this do this she used to do her own work but in that process seeing her helping her we used to learn so much and uh, we used to be always involved in her work you know she used to make her plates and all even uh, we had a professor like uh, dhiraj chaudhary sir was there he never taught us that you know do this do this this is how you should do it he used to be in a studio he used to work and whenever we used to go and talk to him he used to be working and he used to 
just tell us the way he used to be working, that itself used to be a learning process for us. So all our teachers, we had Narendra Sinsa, we had Falguni Das, and a lot of our teachers, you know, they were so good because they were working and we could see them uh, practical, practically working there in their studio. Uh, so that journey was wonderful. I think those four years of art college and actually art college is something, you know, you don't learn anything there. Nobody is going to take your hand and guide you and tell you do this. You know, although it's a professional college, you have to uh, learn it. You just have to observe. You have to, uh, you know, learn, make a process of your own. And if you're interested and what you're doing gives you happiness, you ultimately learn. Uh, because when you come out of the college, as it happens with everyone, it's a completely different world. I mean, you are just, you are in such a world where, you know, you're all alone and you're struggling and then the artist struggle becomes. Till you're in college, you feel you can conquer the world, you know, there's nothing that you can't do. But once you're out of it and when you have to fend for yourself and when you have to establish yourself as an artist, that's when the uh, real star struggle starts. <laughs> you know, that's what. So who, whose name uh, does it strike or whose face uh, strikes when you talk about the struggling stage as soon as you finish the college? Who helped you uh, establish yourself initially? Look, I have had a very rough journey to be very frank. I, uh, after my college, I did my master's and after that, uh, there was a phase in my life where I was not able to work for a period of time. And I was uh, very, very unhappy. I wanted to work, but because of certain circumstances, I was not able to. And, you know, that's where good teachers come into play. Like, I used to meet my professors. And whenever I used to meet them, I used to just say that I really want to work and come, you know, start work as an artist, but I'm not able to do it. And I remember one of my professors, he said, uh, Shamba, why do you worry? You know, this phase of your life is also going to help you in your work. This phase, you are quietly observing things. You are, you know, everything. It's like, you know, you are, you are taking in. Your observation is there. And this phase will also help you. So don't worry. And when you have to start, you will start. So I'm thankful that, you know, that phase was not a long phase period. But of course, there was. And I started. And after that, there was no looking back. Uh, my husband, uh, I would say, was a big factor. He's a travel photographer and Sanjay Dutt. He, I remember he used to buy colors. My supplier still tells me he used to buy colors, canvases, and I work in acrylic. So he used to buy these things and I used to say, okay, I'm going to start from today, tomorrow, you know, because of my circumstances, I was not able to. And one day I just uh, was speaking to him and he said, look, if you want to do something, you have to do it right now because later on in your life, you should not repent that, you know, I want, I could have done it and I didn't. So that stuck on to me. I said, yeah, that's right. If later on in life, I just tell myself, now I'm making so many excuses, but later on in on life, if I'm not able to do what I want to really do, means I'll be the most unhappiest person. So that's how I started, and uh, it was uh, it was challenging, of course. It was very, very challenging. But I think so. Art and challenges. If you want to be an artist, you should be ready to struggle. <laughs> that's a part of it. So we also have some friends joining in. Uh, we have some comments. Uh, so Sapna Khanna is saying, "Good to hear from you, ma'am." And then uh, we have uh, Karumanai Sir. Uh, he's saying namaste. So thank you guys for joining in. If you have any questions for uh, Shampaji, which uh, she can address or answer uh, while she is live here, feel free to ask in the chat and I'll, I'll ask her uh, while we are talking. So for uh, friends who have not seen her artwork, I have a quick video and uh, we'll showcase her artwork and then we'll get back to uh, her with respect to the questions as to what's the style, what is the theme. So, you know, once you see the artwork, if you have any specific questions, feel free to, you know, share it in these comments. And also, if you have any favorite artwork that you've seen during this particular uh, video, also mention that uh, here. So here is a quick video. Over to you.
beautiful so um, shampa ji you've got a style of art what 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 is this style called and uh, i i see uh, mostly nature uh, I, i see a lot of uh, depth there are a lot of uh, you know highlights you've done within the art where you know ak and the rake you know it, there is you know there is a journey uh, you know of yes. depth within the artwork uh, but maybe you know that's a layman you know who is not an artist trying to describe uh, your art but you know uh, if you can you know share throw some light as to what do you look at what, what do you capture you know what's what's your style of your art yes uh, so uh, actually um, if you see my work Uh, there is a process to my work i cannot just sit in a studio and start working it never happens like that uh, i have to my travel is a big part uh, in my journey so um, uh, the travel started with uh, uh, you know i had gone to ladakh and uh, when i uh, went to ladakh i went there as a tourist just to see and when i when i saw that when i saw ladakh in the villages also we were we were traveling it was so mesmerizing and what strikes you first is nature you know it's such a pristine such a clean kind of an atmosphere and you feel so tiny over there uh, because when we are in delhi like i am in a big metropolitan city like delhi we have this ego you know that uh, um which uh, uh, which happens that um i am somebody i am uh, just uh, you know like i am i'm so great or something but when you go there uh, you feel that uh, um, you know you are just a <laughs> no problem hello yeah i'm sorry yeah okay we can hear you fine can you hear me so yes, what, yeah. we, what we just uh, you know when we go there Uh, we feel that you know we are so small, and this nature, this vastness of nature, is what hits you first. So when I came back from Ladakh, I start, started a series which was um, Tatva, the five elements of nature, because I could actually feel the five elements which are there. Uh, that is Agni, Jal, Vayu, Prithvi, Akash. You know, you can feel it there. It's so vibrant over there. So uh, on then again when I went back. Uh, i could then again see the second layer which is the shunya that is the voids there are these vast spaces uh, which are there uh, which are you know it seems empty but they are resonating and pulsating with the uh, elements with energy and the vibrations there which you can really feel in the air so i used to go back to ladakh and i'll tell you in in kenya's time at least five times i've been there on route and i used to go there stay Fifteen uh, days, twenty days, if it would allow me a month or so, and I would just observe and I would just go through the villages. I would go and speak to people, and uh, go into the monasteries and all. So that's how the travel and my, uh, you know, the work, the, the images that I have. So if you see my work, uh, there is a texture which happens. I think so. That's how I have imbibed that texture. Because if you see their monasteries and their houses, they have this gumpa mitti. which has a texture you know a very rough texture and the murals and all has lot of gold um, so and the clouds the spiral clouds and uh, the lotuses which i have in my work have essentially come from their thangkas from the murals that i saw so that i imbibed and when i came back to my studio and i was working uh, that vision slowly you know it transformed into the canvas and um, that's how that that style which emerged came in. and of course a lot of studies then because since i was start going there so i started uh, you know studying the buddhist iconography i wanted to know what i'm seeing so that i have a in depth knowledge of what is there so i started uh, um, going through books of buddhist iconography and uh, of the of the environment which is there the history of uh, that place so uh, that's how the stylization came in so you'll see if you see my work there's a process to the work like it's not uh, a single layer which is there there are different layers which are there 
and uh, these layers you can see the you can say is other experiences which happened when i went kept on going again and again to this place there was a show which i did solo show which was pratidhvani after this pratidhvani was again the echo that after the after the site after the uh, void you hear an echo where you where you are hearing new voices where the outer and the inner world become one so uh, so you see whenever i used to go i used to come back inspired and charged and i used to come and sit in the studio and then uh, do then there was a time when i was going inside the monasteries and i was spending a lot of time inside the monasteries so after coming back there was again again a solo which happened which was called dhyan so uh, where you were, you after the echo after you have been through everything you are into that meditative state so then dhyan happened so every every solo or every uh, you know experience added on to my canvas in some way or the other uh, after those 10 years there was a phase when i was traveling to the eastern and the southern uh, part of the country and that time devi shakti became more important in my work so i started you know playing around with devi shakti started reading I used. I was in Manaras. I was in uh, the Bengal. I was in Assam. I was in South, uh, going into the temples, and uh, that's how again there was a change after ten years or so. So that's how the traveling influences my work. So I travel. I read. I try and you know imbibe things which I see, and then when I, when I sit in the studio, all that I have uh, imbibed. somehow from the from here it comes into the hand and you know it transforms into the canvas so this process is very important for me i just cannot do without this process so, uh, so. so we we also have some comments uh, coming in so you know this is about the artwork video which we have played uh, vinesh sharma ji is saying uh, nice thank you kurumanai uh, sur is saying enjoyed your mesmerizing work in the video so yeah so more comments uh, feel free or questions for uh, shampa ji feel free to you know mention it here uh shampa ji quick question um your your husband is a wild uh, you know wildlife photographer you okay you're traveling with him and i'm sure i can imagine that you know he sees a bird and you know he will go behind and you know he will just forget uh, who's uh, who came along with him and you know he yes. will go into the wild so how do you manage yes you are very it's very true uh, you know we're traveling with him since he is a photographer and he has you know he has a different way of working with me it's a different way of working so uh, usually we do travel together but uh, he is in his own zone and for me like i'll, I'll give you an example like uh, i was in banaras with him and uh, we were traveling and he had his own he wanted to cover the ghats and all so i spent the time to go into the different uh, small small temples which are there and over there i came across this temple which is which is of the ashtalakshmi so i sat down with the uh, purohit there i asked him what is Asht- ashtalakshmi he explained he showed me the whole temple and that time the art fair was coming so uh, the gallery i was participating with uh, he they asked me that chapa we want a work good work and what do you feel that you should do and i had no doubt in my mind because when i came back from there i uh, just read about everything and everything was so clear in my head that i started working on the canvas so uh, but of course uh, we are maybe in the same place but we are doing our own work he has his own work and i have my own work so i love uh, traveling alone also i am very comfortable uh, in fact better if i am alone that i can you know do things which i want uh, be at a place enjoy the place learn about the place study and nowadays it's so uh, easy because you have the google with you you know your phone is always handy so any information you want uh, which was not available when we were in school or even when we were in college it was not there so it's very you see something and immediately you can google and you can get that information on spot on the spot so it's very easy and and that way it stays with you for a long period of time you know and that interest comes in uh, so which, which was 
yeah which was your largest uh, you know uh, art uh, you know the time you spent on uh, you know doing an art in an outdoor way where you know you were standing and you know doing the art and you know people were staring at you as to madam kya bana rahi hai <laughs> no i i have i usually i have a you know uh, when i'm outside traveling i don't uh, i don't uh, do any art okay. it's just you know as if exactly. i'm a sponge and i'm just absorbing everything that is coming towards me whether it's conversation whether it's vision or whether it's a image or it's a temple if i'm going to temple i'm talking to people i'm taking notes you know it's a full i'm a total science student there you know i'm doing a complete research work there but when i come into my studio then everything is at the back of my head then the aesthetic takes takes over you know that all this all this is preparation for me to be in the studio and work so on spot it is like if i'm doing some sketches it is just in my notebook that's it Uh, that's just about it i'm just taking notes i'm recording i'm understanding reading but studio is where everything is at the back and then the aesthetics the the vision and the creative part of it takes place so that's how i do it so i remember uh, uh, you know outdoor uh, it's only when we go for camps and other things that we do outdoor we are working but per se i, I it's generally the studio that i work Of course, drawings and all we do. Uh, I'm I'm doing. You know, when I'm at the spot, I may be sketching in my notebook or something. But uh, studio so, is the place I work. So, oh, your favorite artwork and uh, the best travel location that you've been till date? To Lay. Uh, yeah, Lay is so beautiful. And in fact, I'll tell you why. Uh, Lay, uh, the way we travel, we don't go to the general tourist spots. that's one thing which uh, traveling with my husband is uh, is there you know there are uh, there, that's the difficulty in traveling with him because you don't go to the tourist spots you go to very difficult places where people have not been for 3 months i've been to villages where you know uh, they don't understand my language and uh, we sit there for about half an hour just smiling at each other uh, the monk is there and and uh, maybe there is a teacher in the village whom i can converse in hindi or english or generally hindi but otherwise the people in the village i am not able to con- have a conversation so half an hour we just looking at each other the monk which is there and he's looking at me and then i'll write something in their text you know and if i show it to him he'll tell me then he'll correct it and that's where the conversation starts and then he in his own way will explain things to me and i will understand and then the treasures they open up the monasteries when they open up such beautiful tankas and paintings and you know it's like you cannot even imagine it's so beautiful wow. but it takes time to uh, to get acclimatized and you know to understand and also the places that we go are so remote even in bengal when we were traveling it was just villages not the usual tourist places and I, I'm very fortunate to be born in this country because I feel India has everything, and everywhere you go, you there's so much of inspiration. There is so much of things which can inspire you to work as an artist. You know, every like when we come from Ladakh or when we are coming from Bengal or South, when we are traveling, and we travel on road. Our travel is not by air or by train or anything. It's only on road. so when you are traveling every village is giving you something different i mean i was traveling from ladakh most of you must have traveled from ladakh to kargil to shrinagar on the way i could actually see the transformation from buddhist buddhism to the mughal and to kashmir when we reached and there was a village where it was so interesting there was a mosque which was shaped like a stupa but how did i realize that it is a mosque because it had a uh, you know uh, two or three uh, oh, those micro, those uh, uh, loudspeakers for the azan there were two or three loudspeakers and it was like a stupa and uh, those loudspeakers i could make out that that is a mosque even the dresses like you have ladakhi dresses and uh, then when uh, as soon as you are coming towards shrinagar you will find you know they'll start covering their head 
but the dress is the same but they'll start covering and then there will there'll be a phase when there'll be a complete transformation so every village you're seeing a transformation so our country is so beautiful so beautiful and so much to offer i think so a lifetime is very short to cover that uh, and i completely agree i completely yeah. agree with that so you, best moments uh, or you know the craziest moments that you experience and especially your family is well known for traveling your, your husband is a wildlife photographer you're into traveling yeah. and uh, yeah. you know converting capturing those moments into art your son you know uh, is into crazy stunts of you know yes. uh, cycling across um, so i'm not sure what what is he up to now it's been you know a couple oh. of months but uh, uh, what how do you manage uh, such craziness and what, what do friends say uh, yeah yeah it is a little it is not the normal i'm, I'm sure uh, but uh, you know what as i'm very blessed that uh, uh, i have a husband, i have someone as a life partner who's an artist and understands uh, you know what it means to be an artist and gives me that space and that uh, to be what i want to be similarly for my son also i uh, i'm really thankful to him because uh, there was a stage when he was very small also and i used to work in in the studio but never has he uh, ever you know uh, i've never been um, disturbed because of that because of his education or studies or he was very self sufficient so that way i have been blessed that that's why i have been able to work because as an as a artist you really require that much of support from your family you know if you really want to do a serious serious work and all and because um, you're working and then you cannot do you cannot be involved in the house also so it has to be a, a completely freedom has to be given so that way it has been and yes a little bit of craziness is there but um, we we just love uh, traveling being together and you gain so much i this all these travel i think you have gained so much my uh, perspective towards life has changed my way of thinking has changed my canvases have evolved uh, so i think so that's given me a lot of lot of things uh, and i should be thankful for that that i am able to do it so in terms of uh, you know education in art have you seen any transformation uh, then and now do you see any change the way uh, art colleges are teaching students or the way students are uh, you know coming out uh, learning art uh, look uh, uh, i think so when we were students the number of uh, means number of people in the in the in the group was also less and the teachers we had were very dedicated you know uh, they were actually true teachers you know like how a teacher should be so uh, that amount of dedication was there and we were like personal we were like children to them you know it was not that okay so and so has come to an art college to learn art and we are just going to teach them and go back home so they were worried about us uh, there were many people in our in our college who were also not financially well off and all and these teachers used to take care of that also you know give, giving them uh, work other things so they were very involved Uh, in our families, in our way we are, and not only the not only teaching was not only their subject. You know, they used to be totally involved with us. And uh, uh, actually, nowadays uh, students, are, the children are very smart. I would say we were not as smart as them. And also, they have the blessing of being, uh, you know, uh, they have the uh, so much of information. Like today, if they want to know about some museum. somewhere in the corner of the world it is so easily accessible to them which was not there for us you know we were a little cut off from the main uh, art scene when we were in college uh, after we came back came out that's when we started interacting but students are really blessed and they should take this opportunity and utilize it to the maximum be it art be you know they can listen to anyone from any corner of the world so that's a blessing we used to wait for uh, uh you know outside professors to come or visiting uh, faculty to come to so that we can listen to them artists to come to us to our to, uh, to our uh, college but nowadays because of the technology uh, students are blessed to have that kind of an access only thing which i feel is that you know there's too much of hurry to uh, reach a point 
that hurry is not needed you know because art has a journey and you have to fulfill that journey if an artist is putting 20 years into uh, to into art it's a journey that he or she is covering you know which is going to enhance her work or his work so that journey cannot there cannot be a shortcut for that journey i don't think so because being a creative person you have to undergo that struggle also you have to undergo all the things that an artist must to and that will reflect in your work it will not be frivolous that depth will reflect in your work many a times i come across people who say art mein kya padhai karna hai so I say you don't understand. It's all the more difficult because we don't have a set syllabus. Nobody is telling you, okay, you you study from A to Z and you become an artist. It's not possible that way. You should have knowledge about everything, and more so in today's world because art is not only restricted to the canvas and the color. You know, there are so many mediums, there are so many forms, and the more you explore, the more aware you are, the better it is for you. So. Um, I think that patience should be there, you know, just the time jo lagega, wo to lagega, usko dena padega, you, aap ye nahi bol sakte ki mein aaj yahan se yahan tak do din mein pohut jauma, ye hoga nahi, that is not possible. Yeah. So that patience, uh, you know, because art gives you a lot of freedom, because you have the power, you're making something, you're creating something, and, uh, um, you know, it, it requires discipline. And uh, that discipline, nobody is going to tell you. You have to have that discipline for yourself. You've you got a very valid point out there. You know, you cannot rush art. Yes. I, I feel that because every work you're making is a stepping stone to your journey. It is not the end. Or it is not. The moment you you, you consider yourself that I, I know it all and I've done it all, that's the end of an artist. You know, you should be like a sponge to take in everything that comes in your way and see how best you can form your language and uh, put it on the canvas or the medium that you're choosing. How you're going to express. So that language has to be, uh, that language requires a journey. That language requires dedication to have that language. And it's very essential for an artist to have his or her individual language. You cannot copy that language from anyone. The moment you copy it, maybe you will be, you know, initially you will be, uh, you're getting a lot of accolades and all. But ultimately, it's very frivolous. It is. It doesn't have depth. So that will not last. True. That's what I feel. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I feel. Uh, Sharad Bharadwaj ji, I love your works. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, so, uh, Shampa ji, uh, tell me this. Uh, agar aap, uh, you, you're traveling, you're going to an international location, you know, pe, where people don't know that you're an artist and you go to an art gallery. Mein jate ho. So what is that you will look at in the uh, displays there, in the gallery? What is that you will see in the art there? So it's an art gallery. You know, there are different artists who have uh, portrayed their artwork there. So what is that you would look at? Kya dekho gaya? Kya dhoondo gaya? Or how do you, and how do you praise uh, uh, you know something which you've liked over there? Yeah, definitely. Look, first of all, when I'm going somewhere, it's a different experience. Every place, and you're saying abroad, like out. So every place has a different, you know, the artist of that place, whoever is, you know, they have a particular way of uh, doing. So definitely, any art that you see, you you will be interested and you will definitely look around and all. And if there is some something which is which really, you know, it's not it's not whether it's abstract or figurative or anything. I mean, I love uh, you learn from everything. You learn from everything. So uh, definitely, uh, if there is something which which interest because art is what art is something you know that you can make a connection with. And if I'm connecting with something, I would definitely praise it or you know say some some good words about it so i don't i don't see you know even a, even if you see the indian uh, uh, folk art and all if you go to the villages if you see these walls that these ladies uh, tribal villages it's so simple few basic colors 
simple lines, but they connect with you. You know, you can you there is a connection which builds up. They're not doing anything great over there or not doing masterpieces over there. But it just connects. So anything that connects with you, art has to connect with you. If it does that, then I think so most of its purpose is solved. Got it. Got it. So um, are you comfortable, uh, or you know, uh, let me ask this as a generic question. Are artists comfortable praising others' arts? Uh, look, I think so. It's very because I what I know, like uh, when you have um, artists going to each other's studio is very important, which is sadly not happening nowadays. Uh, whatever the reasons might be, but this used to happen, um, you know, uh, with our older generation. The, the, the like you see, I've heard, I've heard in fact because I was with the Kumar Art Gallery, and that time Rindaji was there, and he used to tell me that. We used to have these sessions where all these artists used to sit together and we used to talk about art, you know, the, all through the night we are talking about art. I mean, it's so wonderful. And artists used to visit each other's galleries, and, uh, sorry, studios. And then, <laughs> because, you know, but there used to be criticism, but criticism used to be a constructive Hel criticism. Yeah, constructive and healthy. Yeah, it never used to be a criticism. Uh, where you're pulling down something, you know, unnecessarily. If you're saying that I'm not liking this, then there is a reason to it. And whoever is saying that he or she has a hold on, you know, is, is an authority. He's not saying it just like that. So that kind of a conversation, that kind of a um, debate is very, very healthy, which sadly enough doesn't happen now. You know, we are, um, we are in fact uh, praising everything. Uh, I'm not saying you know everyone, every artist's work is good because he or she has put in their thoughts, their language on the canvas. But then constructive criticism is very essential. And I think so that's why we, we have these exhibitions, you know, like a solo show. When you're having a solo show, it's practically that you're putting yourself completely out there for anything to come your way. It can be criticism, it can be good, um, uh, you know, it can be appreciation whatever but it is very important for an artist to have these shows solo shows because if you're sitting in the studio and just working and selling a few two three work then what are you doing sure. where are you showing your thought or where are you showing your expression where are you showing your language so uh, these shows you know like these um, to have a healthy debate is very essential um, so where do you go? Where do you go to get good reviews about your uh, artwork? Where do you um, get this criticism? Because I'm sure your husband will be like, wow, wow, you know, this is superb. No, no, your son will be. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's the worst. He's the, I think so, he's the worst critic for my work. And so am I for him. Because none of our works leaves our studio without me telling him something about his work or he, him telling me about my work but yeah we i definitely we have friends and all we do sit down at times also uh, i'm very you know blessed there have been many people who have helped me when i was not my works were not known anywhere and uh, i'm always grateful to their galleries who have who have put up my work uh, i mean they didn't nobody knew me and they have put up my work and they have supported me I will not take the name because you know it's a public uh, this i won't i don't want to embarrass them by you know taking their names or not there have been curators there have been art critics in fact today in, in fact today itself i was having a word with one of them she had gone to my show one of the shows that is going on and she made it a point to ring me up and tell me that champa i went and saw your work it's a big thing for me you know she could have just gone and not called me up but she called me up and said champa i went to your work to see your work and this is what I like. And so this kind of a healthy, uh, you know, criticism or appreciation helps you. And uh, I'm fortunate that I have uh, my galleries whom I work with, who represent me, who have my work. They're very, uh, some of them have been with me for such a long time. And uh, they have been with me when I was, nobody knew my work. So I'm always grateful for that. Um, I, I'll take you, I'll take, there is an art critic and the first show that I was happy, happening, which was uh, my solo, I went to her, she saw my work and she said, I'll write for you. 
I mean, she said, I'll just write for you. Don't worry. So uh, I think so. it's a blessing that, you know, to get so much of love and appreciation uh, for, from people who know, uh, who, who understand. So that is a blessing that I, I think so I'm very fortunate that I had. Uh, Shampaji, you, you, you've come a long way, you know, uh, and you, you've traveled to the journey from struggles to, you know, you, now you know where you are and, you know, people recognize you, you've established yourself. So what is the suggestion you have for the struggling artists who have very good work, but struggling to make their mark? You know, they don't know how to showcase their work. They don't know, you know, how to showcase their work, where to showcase you know, how, how do they sell their art? So what, what is the suggestion you have? Um, I would say that, first of all, uh, you know, making yourself uh, aware is very important. Aware, how aware? Aware, not only, of course, your art is there. But um, uh, through studies, through research, proper research, proper studies, you know, and um, uh, just keeping yourself well informed because you don't know where the inspiration is going to come from or what is going to help you out, you know, something might just strike you. So keeping your uh, knowing things, keeping your information uh, absolutely, you know, keeping yourself well informed, that is one thing. Secondly, uh, have a lot of, you know, faith and confidence. It's a tough journey because you, if you see, there's so many artists who come out from these art colleges every year. Everyone, nobody, you know, out of that one or two people will be there in two years or three years that people will come to know. So developing a language of your own is very difficult. Very difficult. So um, for that, you know, you need complete dedication. You need to uh, be confident about what you're doing and uh, keeping yourself well informed and patient. Don't get, don't, don't take a shortcut. It doesn't help. It might help you in one or two years, you know, but ultimately it will not help you. So uh, have confidence on your work. Um, and it's a it's a difficult, it's, being an artist is difficult, you know. It seems you, you just take your canvas and you paint it and you do it. But you have to understand you're doing something, you're doing, you're creating something. And then you're putting it out to other people and then you're understanding how they react to it or how you react to it. So like when I start a canvas, I don't know what I'm going to make. I start a blank canvas and these layer by layer uh, colors come in. Uh, to me, even that is philosophy. Like uh, in your life, whatever you are now is a sum total of all your experiences in your life from the day you were born or even before that when you were in the womb. So all these experiences, sum total make you what you are today. So when you're creating a canvas, these layer by layer, that application of color, and then you put in things which are important, and then you delete things which are not. So it's like life, you know, you, have, you prioritize things. So life, you have to prioritize things, and it's a tough journey, but it's a wonderful journey because at the end of the day, you're doing something which you would love to do. You don't get tired doing it. You know, all through the day you're working, all through the night you're working, you're not getting tired because you're doing something which you love to do. So having patience is very important. Um, and the rest is, you know, don't lose that hope and confidence. Because it's a tough, it's a tough uh, life. Yeah. But once you pick up a language of your own, once you uh, find the way, then things, you know, you start, that cloud starts sorting out. That haze, uh, that haze, you know, it starts lifting and you start seeing the way. But you have to take those one, one step. And the journey should continue. Okay. Thank you, because this will help a lot of, uh, you know, budding artists who are like trying to, you know, waiting for the cloud to, you know, pass away where they yeah. have a lot of clarity. But it's very difficult. It's difficult. Mm. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm very... Uh, I mean, it's it's hats off to them because at this such situation, after the pandemic and all, things are difficult for people. But in that also, people who are working, uh, especially the younger generation who are at it, I, I really, all my best wishes to them because it's very difficult to survive in this condition for a, for a young artist. 
so so true uh, samir uh, chanda ji is saying uh, superb uh, mohammad salim jaipur uh, is saying very nice uh, talk uh, thank you sir uh, so last question champa ji i mean we were almost close to an hour yeah. uh, when when you uh, come to an atmosphere where you know it's all about art like your studio you know uh, a person like me who is very new to art even he is like yaar kuch banana hai let me you know start practicing and all that are you open to uh, you know somebody coming and working in your studio and uh, you know exploring art like the way uh, you do you know are you open or you you love to you know work uh, in a solo atmosphere no look uh... definitely when i work i i need complete seclusion that that goes for every artist you know but definitely um it's also fun to have you know for some if someone wants to come and uh, just be there because you also learn many things uh, in that process and um, uh, definitely because what you are doing is completely out there and you are very if, if an artist is very clear about what he or she is doing it doesn't matter that if someone is there and uh, you can share your journey you can share your uh, way of working and we do uh, we do hold sessions and all where we uh, workshop where we are showing our way of working because there are many people who are start we didn't have that you know we we learned it from our uh, teachers how we learned it is that we used to go to their uh, uh, studios and we used to uh, classes class used to be on and their studio used to be right next door So we used to go and we used to see them working. So when you see the artists, I still remember that when I used to see them working, that has remained with me. The texture that I apply, I used to see my professors doing it. Of course, I made it my own. I started in that way, but I made it my own. The language I developed on my own. But I've seen them working, so that really helps. Uh, because art is something which you have to see practically. Would you know if you see it, you cannot read art. I mean, you cannot learn a technique by reading. You have to do it. You have to see it. Definitely, and it's it's uh, quite nice. And at times when we have these sessions where younger artists are there, and there's so much to learn from them. They are so well informed. And I would say uh, about the material and other things and experiments that they do, uh, it's really commendable the way they go about it because they because of they're so well informed. Uh, so. it's a learning process it's it's a two way street so you learn definitely thank you thanks a lot shampa ji for joining us on this particular show uh, you you've been very humble you you've uh, i i think uh, hearing your journey any any budding artist any artist would connect uh, with the journey and uh, you know the struggle which is involved uh, thanks for sparing time with us thank and uh, thank thank you for being in one location not traveling <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah I, i i again i i mentioned this uh, you know uh, i i feel very really jealous of the entire family the way you are uh, you know exploring and traveling things and you know where, no, where the, your... I, if i may say the pandemic has taught us one thing we are not traveling uh, physically but we are definitely traveling inward you know that journey inward is there for many people and for me especially there's been a lot of uh, introspection Um, if you say two years of this pandemic has taught you many things which you maybe before two years you would never imagine, and you started introspecting and prioritizing things which are important for you and which are not important. For you. So, uh, so therefore the journey is there, but the journey is an inward journey which is there. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Shampa ji, and thanks a lot, uh, lovely audience who've been, you know, uh, watching this and commenting on this particular show. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, Sneha ji for enabling Sneha Arts uh, through which I could connect uh, eminent artists like you. So thank you, Shampa ji. Thank you again. Thank you, friends. Have a great evening. Thank you, you, Ravi and Sneha Arts for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Mushka.